Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Matthew Marsden Show and Marsden's Mondays. How are you? Did you see the eclipse? It was pretty darn amazing. I think it was. Anyway, I've never seen anything like that in my life. And by the way, do you like the T-shirt I'm representing? I don't know. I don't know if it, if you are a child of the eighties, but I remember when I was a kid, like getting an Atari was just peak, right? Like it's what everybody wanted to get. Um, Pac-Man or Space Invaders or Frogger, which do you think was the best video game? I don't know. I'm I'm kind of lean towards Pac-Man. Not a big fan of Ms. Pac-Man. It's weird. Don't you think? Didn't like that one. Don't know why. Love Space Invaders. Space Invaders is actually the only game that I clocked, is it? When you go all the way around. I got so many points that it kind of went round. So anyway, um, enough about me and my gaming past. Uh, I'm going to go to your questions. All right. So Cringe Panda, how are you? Um, She's asked me a couple of questions. The first question is, what is your approach to improv in a group audition? I have to say, I have never done a group audition. I've been very fortunate. Uh, I think that because when I was younger, I got in kind of early. And so, um, I mean, I haven't really auditioned uh, like that in that scenario for a very long time. I actually hate auditioning. I always hated auditioning. And I... I, I love uh, doing self-tapes. For those of you who don't know, self-tapes are when you put a camera up and you do your own audition because it's a really – it's auditions are the worst environment. It's, it's a very unnatural environment for you to show what you're good at in. You know, you've got people looking at you like just staring and you've got to do a read with someone next to the camera and normally they're terrible. But anyway, uh, I – I've never done a, a group audition, so I can't say on that. All right, second one. Do you agree with Michael Caine that you should never have a romance with a fellow cast member while a production is underway? Yeah, you should never have a romance with a cast member anyway. It's it's never going to end well. Never, ever going to end well. Uh, third, what are our chances of getting a conservative Hollywood and where could it be? <sighs> You guys know that follow me, and I keep going on about this on um, the other platforms to subscribe. And the reason why I keep going on about subscribing is we need to show people that there is a market. I know that might sound really stupid to the majority of us because we look at things like Top Gun Maverick makes a gajillion dollars, and people go, oh, I wonder why that made money. Yeah, because it's, it's not even a conservative Hollywood, right? It's just a decent movie that isn't woke, that doesn't try and throw things down your neck. I mean, look, there was a, a multiracial cast in that. Nobody cared, right? Nobody cared. There were female fighter pilots. Nobody cared because it was a good movie. Nobody cares about that stuff if you do it right. People care about it when it's thrown, shoved down your throat, right? So in answer to the question, I mean, are we going to get a conservative Hollywood? When people invest in people that have actually done it, You've seen the level of the movies that come out. They're terrible because people do not invest in filmmakers that are conservative. They invest in conservative filmmakers, and it's never going to change. You have to hire people that have done it before. Then it can be built. That's why I moved to Dallas, because I believe that this is where it's going to be. It's up to investors. Jacob Airy, hey Jacob, says, you've been in the director's chair for I Am That Man, and he plans to direct again, and how was the directing experience for you? It's a great question. I loved directing. I, I'm, a, I'm an actor's director, uh, obviously, being an actor. I found that when I work with Sly, he's an actor's director. He knows what the actors are looking for, uh, and I tried to do that on my set. I loved it. I actually found it quite easy. Uh, I think when, you know, you have a bunch of kids, you you know how to manage different personalities, and that's part and parcel of being a director. And I, I've hired very well. I had great people on my team. So I loved it. Yeah, I'd love to direct again. It's got to be the right thing. Uh, I have a couple of things. Someone hit me up for another script that I wrote to direct. Um, 
I'd love to do that. That's that's a big step up. But yeah, I'd love to direct again. Uh, I'm not going to say it. political. All right, political herpes. Uh, how was Tom size more in real life? I'm going to skip on that. Uh, Lisa, what inspired you to portray the U.S. military in some of your roles? That's a great question, actually. Um, I, after doing Black Hawk Down and being around those guys, the real guys, the real Army Rangers, the real Delta Force guys, the real Navy SEALs, they're just my people. I just like them. And the fact that they would put on a uniform and go and fight for my freedom, someone that they didn't know or had never met, was unbelievable to me so i saw the reaction that people got after watching black hawk down or should i say the reaction people had both the people in the military and people outside the military especially the people in the military they were kind of they they, they would say to me that that was just changed my life it was amazing how you guys were really respectful and then i saw the opposite of that where there were if you think about it, after Black Hawk Down, uh, Hollywood started making anti-American, anti-military movies for a long time. Think about it. And I just didn't like that. So I wanted to be able to play as many military roles as I could. So then also, so it could help me when I was going out helping veterans and veterans charities. So that was a real focus of mine. Um, and those are the greatest stories, to be honest. Right, what's more heroic than a true story about a veteran overcoming the odds, you know, or, or military action where people showed real heroism? Love it. Uh, all right, uh, I am Grizzly Bear. Do you miss the UK? I miss the people. When I came back recently, when I went back recently, should I say, I, I just was stunned with its beauty. I, 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 there was so much there that I hadn't appreciated before, the churches especially. Uh, I just walked past them before, and then like I was in Norwich, and I'm like, you throw a stone, and you see this beautiful, beautiful church. And when I was off, my time off, that's what I did. I went and visited the sites, went to Norwich Cathedral, and, I mean, it was just a beautiful place, and somewhere that I never really wanted to go before. Um, so I miss... I miss my people back there very much, but England is not what it used to be, and that's very sad. Kevin Williams, do you like Marmite? I love Marmite. I really do. I love Marmite. Now you make me want to go and have some Marmite. That's just... Why did you do that? Um, some Norwegian guy. What year did you first sense that political correctness had begun to impact movies? And what do you, did you think of it in the beginning? That's a really difficult question. Um, I couldn't really pinpoint it. Maybe in around 2010, around then, uh, after Rambo, you know, when I did Rambo in 2008, and then Transformers, there wasn't really political correctness then that I can remember. But I remember him saying in the UK, it started in the UK when they said, we can't call it Christmas, we've got to call it Winterval. And then they said, we, um, we can't call it a manhole, we've got to call it a person hole. And everyone just thought that was outrageous and ridiculous. And now you can get fired. <laughs> you lose your job if you say, it's just a frigging manhole, man. Like, it's a manhole. It's called a manhole. A man goes down the hole. We can't call it that anymore. That, just ridiculous. Just ridiculous. Um, but I can't, I couldn't really pinpoint, the only, the only way you can look at it, I can't really say in the scripts because they've always been pushing it in scripts since I've been in Hollywood anyway. Certainly like the agenda, uh, or as uh, the drinker would say, the message. Um, but it was kind of more soul. And then it just got just crazy. And look, I don't mind there being a yin and a yang, like a push and a pull. I think there needs to be a push and a pull in society because then you get like the middle. But it's just going like, oh, sorry. It's gone all the way over to the left now. It's just total left. And anything right of extreme left, you're a fascist, racist, Nazi. It's ridiculous. But, um, hmm. 
All right. Leslie says, did you ever attend the Golden Globes or Academy Awards? The Academy Awards uh, in 2002, was it? Black Hawk Down was released 2001, and I went to the Academy Awards. I didn't actually go to the ceremony because everyone was like, don't go to the ceremony. You have to sit there for all this time. Like, unless, you, unless you're actually nominated, you don't want to be there. Um, so I went to the parties. And it was crazy. It was like, you know. So I'll, I'll, I'll tell you a little story about that. So I get told that Versace is going to dress me for the Academy Awards because I'm going to go to the party. And I turn up to the, I think it was the Beverly Hills Hotel. I, I was getting mixed up the Beverly Hills Hilton or Beverly Hills Hotel. I think it was the Beverly Hills Hilton. And I get there and this guy comes out, you know, tall Italian guy, gay guy. He looks at me and he, he, he breaks down my sizes immediately. And he goes, come with me. You know, the, the women would like to meet you. And I walk in and they open the door. And it's like, I can't remember whether it was a, because this is some time ago now. I remember him opening the doors and there was just lines of seamstresses making, um, making the clothes for all the different actresses and actors. And he goes, you know, you're going to have black, black, like, so I basically had, and it was the amazing, it was a black tuxedo with a black tie with you know, the other little gold, very subtle, very little gold Versace, about this big Versace uh, logo, you know, that like Medusa head on the back of each one of my shoes as well and on my cufflinks. And it was incredible. I mean, it, it was like, it's like how I imagine women feel when they put on a little black dress or, you know, a really great outfit because it was just incredible. And I remember my, uh, my agent, if he's, I'm still friends with my agent from back then. Um, he'll know who he is if he's watching this. And he came up and he, he pulls up into to the house I was staying in in Beverly Hills. And he and I, and I walked out and he went, oh, man, I thought I looked really good. <laughs> and so look at you. I mean, it was like the outfit that was unbelievable. So you can see pictures of it. And I actually left that outfit in my friend's house. I've never seen it again. Crazy. So, but yeah, I went to it and, and it was unbelievable. I mean, it really was kind of weird, a bit trippy. Um, what was funny was I went, I saw, um, so Janet Jackson was there and I'd interviewed her for Pepsi, um, a few months before. And I was like, I said to my buddies, I was like, I'm going to go over and speak to Janet Jackson. I'm going to go over and say, you know, cause I had a bit of a crush on Janet Jackson back in the day. And I went off and I was like, Hi, uh, I said, I don't know if you remember me, but I interviewed you on the beach in South Africa. And she went, no, sorry. And I was like, oh, man, just been totally shut down by Janet Jackson. But um, go do what you got to do, right? Um, all right, I'm going to this other line of questions I have. Sierra, yes, why haven't, uh, how come you haven't answered any of the questions? I'm doing it now. Uh, cringe Panda again, only one. But it wasn't one, was it, Cringe? It wasn't. You did three, and then this is one. She's awesome, by the way. Uh, been very kind to me, messaging me. Uh, only one. Why do you suppose Hollywood imports so many British actors to play American characters, series leads? Is our acting training not up to par with British training? Okay, I'll tell you why. I've mentioned this before, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it again. The actors that you get that are British in America have been through the filter system. So they've been through, th for the most part, they've been to drama school, then they've been to theater, into theater, then they've broken through to television, then maybe the movies, and then they'll get into um, American productions. So there's a filter system of quality as you go up. If you're no good, you don't even get into theater, right? If you get into theater and you're really good and you get the breaks, then you get into television. Then you, you move up and up and up. So there's a filter system. So it's kind of unfair. Uh, Americans get the best, like the best of the of the British actors, and British actors, for the most part, are very technical. So they'll know, as I detailed in another video I did about where you put your hands and when you're drinking. You know, you want to make sure you're either not bringing your hands into the shot when you're saying your lines, or you're going to do it at a specific time. You're going to repeat that every single time. British actors are really, really good for number one, remembering their lines, right? Number two, we're really grateful for getting the jobs, right? So we're kind of like, wow, I can't believe we're doing this. Uh, and number three, we hit our marks all the time. 
And so if you're in a movie like I was Black Hawk Down, Ridley Scott doesn't want to worry about us not hitting our marks so the focus isn't right on the camera and you ruin the whole shot. We're really good at doing that and that comes through theatre. But a lot of the a lot of the uh, New York actors that have done theatre are very good at that. Uh, it's just the kind of like, you know, I don't read the script, the script reads me type of actors are a bit of a nightmare uh, for directors when it comes to hitting the mark and saying the lines. All right, Dan Gage. Are the rumors true regarding the once possibility of a schoolboy spin-off after Rambo? I was sad to see your character didn't get to return for Last Blood. Would have been a cool addition to help an aging Rambo. Yeah, the rumors are true. It's not so much it was a spin-off as in a continuation of the Rambo franchise that Ra uh, Rambo was going to take more of a Colonel Troutman kind of role and Schoolboy was going to be the precision weapon. Very different to Rambo that Sly told me. It's like more like a uh, blunt force trauma kind of soldier, whereas Schoolboy was the whole point of him using the sniper rifle was he's very precise he's a new breed of soldier and i think i think sly kind of did that a little bit with creed where he brought in a new kind of um a new kind of boxer but i would love to have done a spin-off with schoolboy you know we, we still could um yeah and no, i would love to have gone back for the the fifth one although i didn't think there was going to be a fifth one i thought the fourth one was a great way to sign off Keza says, uh, what was your favorite acting gig that you have done? Um, I love them all. I'm very blessed to work at all uh, in something that I really love doing, that I've done since I was a kid. Uh, I love every one of them. I've had different experiences, different wonderful experiences on each one. Learn, teachable experiences, should I say, on each one. I've learned a lot on each one. Um, Black Hawk Down obviously won two Oscars, introduced me to the American military. Worked with Ridley Scott, Jerry Bruckheimer, all the boys that were on that. I mean, it was amazing. Working on Transformers, even though they messed my credit up. Um, that was amazing. Loved doing that. Loved working with Michael Bay. I mean, I, I could just go on and on, obviously. Ram uh, Rambo was huge for me. I, I'm just all of them. Paul Hurley, who wins tonight, Purdue or UConn? I have no idea. Sorry, dude. Um, is it Purdue or Purdue? It's Purdue, I think. Um, Anthony Mayhem, is a fun one. Favorite foods to eat when you're on a film? Is there anything you avoid while filming? All right, so I did a movie. My first film was um really my first film was a film called Le Cerf Soleil that was shot in France. And I was back and forth on that one um for for quite a bit of time. And it was basically the equivalent of working with the French Monty Python team. If you guys have ever seen the movie Le Visiteur, uh Christian Clavier and Jean Renault, everyone knows Jean Renault, but um Christian Clavier, amazing, amazing comedians and Le Visiteur is funny. It's a very funny movie. And the French just have the best food on set. I mean, they, I mean, they would just like stop. All right, it's lunch, and you'd have wine on set, which you'd never get on a American movie set or a British movie set. Uh, the coffee, of course, was amazing. Uh, I'm not going to say what I had on set because it would scandalize a few people. But the the food was just otherworldly. I mean, I've never experienced food like that since. Let's put it like that, before or since. Um, Pure Heart says, are there any long-standing characters of the dark? I don't know what that means. Of the dark? Of the dark side? Uh, I don't know. I, um, I love a lot of people that are still there that were very good to me. Sally Whitaker was very good to me. Um, Mike Lavelle was very good to me. Um, Denise Welsh, she was not there anymore. Love her. Um, actually, still got a great relationship with um, Charlie Lawson. He's awesome. Lawson's awesome. So I have a, a really wonderful memory of my time on that show. 
And by the way, I didn't think that I was bigger than the show when I left. I just knew that I would get typecast if I stayed in it. And as you guys have known from my career since then, I don't like, I'm a little bit of a contrarian. So when everyone thinks that I was going to stay in the street forever, I got out. But I was very grateful for it. I'm very grateful for winning that thing over there. Um, Jose Taka, that's great. Is there any hope for the UK with losing its identity? I never lose hope, you know. I never lose hope on anything. We can always come back, but people are going to have to stand up. Again, this is why I keep asking people to subscribe to YouTube, because I want to see how much it matters to them that there are people out there that are saying things that they agree with. And if, if you can't so much as press subscribe, then you're not going to go out and fight for your culture in the streets, which is, I don't mean literally fight. I mean, like, go out and protest and say, look, there's, I, I should be proud to be a Brit. And you should be proud to be a Brit. You should. And the English and the Scottish and, well, you know, I'm joking about the Scottish. I'm just joking. But you've got to fight and stop having people tell you that what, what you believe in is wrong and is bad. Because it's not. The UK stood alone against tyranny at one point. And we should be proud of that. And we should not. All you've got to do is watch Dunkirk. Like watch Dunkirk and see how great Great Britain was. And it can be again. The people are still great. And the fact of the matter is, is the cultures that are being imported into the country are not. Not all cultures are created equal. That is just a fact. And don't let them call you a racist because you express that. All right. Um, S. Leach, what was it like working with Stallone? Amazing. You know, he's a, he's a workaholic. He's a genius, like literally he's a genius. I mean, he, I mean, he won an Oscar for his first script. He's, he's amazing. I've never known anyone work as hard. I've never worked any, any, I've never worked with anyone that's worked as hard as Stallone and continues to work as hard as him. Um, he knows actors down. He came up to us once. He was like, take that off, take that off. Like about gear that we were carrying. He goes, you can't carry that in the jungle. Like it'll kill you. I don't know another director that would really have thought like that. And he's unbelievable. Uh, hot dog, not dog. Uh, was the SAS guy in Rambo putting on that accent? Yes, it's Graham McTavish. And he is amazing. I love Graham. Graham is one of the good people in the world. So um, he's an amazing person. Uh, he says, how do I unfollow you? I would usually click the tab, but unfortunately your tab has requested a subscribe option, and that is literally the opposite of my intention. Thanks and shit. Sorry, dude. What am I going to do? You're stuck with me. I know you love me, really. It's a love-hate thing. I know. It's kind of like, oh, you know, no, no. I'm really saying, yeah, yeah. Um. TMM says, Rahim Kassam, who I, whom I adore, by the way, has a problem with American iced tea and buttermilk biscuits. He's, he sadly thinks hot, weak, and milky tea with stale cookies are the real tea and biscuits. He's quite upset and wants a fight. What's your opinion? Cotton to the tea thing. I get when people bring iced tea to me, I'm like, it's an abomination. I'm sorry. It doesn't matter how long I would live in America and how much I love this country. Iced tea? Oh, no. The biscuit thing, I'm over now. It, for a long time, I'd be like, why are you calling these big things biscuits? I don't understand them. Biscuits for me were like shortbread, you know, or jammy dodgers, which are my favorite, which are shortbread. But um, biscuits now are biscuits, as in biscuits and gravy. And they're delicious. Um, tea is tea, dude. Tea is tea bag in the cup and then milk. Sorry. Um, don't fight him, though. Don't fight Rahim. He's partially right. Um, Chris Coleman. Are you going to watch MotoGP at Kota? No, I'm not. I, you know, it's been a long time since I've been to any bike racing. Uh, I miss it. I have to stay away because I have a bunch of kids now. And I, as you probably know, I used to race. And um, 
don't want to be putting my bike around a tree. I've had multiple people that I know die. So I can't be doing biking anymore, even though it pulls at my heart. Uh, Grandma, grand, uh, uh, sorry, sorry, Grandma. Uh, Granadas says, do you have a big yard or you do, or do you live in a McMansion? I do not live in a McMansion, but I have a, I don't have a, a biggest yard as what I would like. Let's put it like that. And some of the troll. Yeah, have you guys noticed there's been like a, oh, look. Can you guys hear that? It's the fashion police. Stop. You can't wear Atari t-shirts on camera. Um, I forgot my train of thought now. What was I saying? Oh, yeah. Have you noticed about uh, the one negative thing that I would say about X is there's been a lot of trolls on there. There's a lot of um, like nudes in my bio kind of thing. Same with like trading. They come and they're like, let me save you, you know, or let me make you $10,000 from, you know, 50 cents, whatever it is. There's a lot of that. Um, it's very annoying. All right, that's it. That's all the questions. Again, I have a couple of interviews coming up. The schedule has not allowed it so far, so we will have a couple of nice, long interviews. I know people go, well, people don't want to see that. Well, I disagree. I think that people come in and out of these things. There's some things they like. There's some things they don't like. So I'm trying to do, I'm going to do more like brief subjects as well, like this, like Marsden's Mondays. And then I'm going to do some, a little bit deeper um, conversations. You know, I remember when, when I used to go on my runs and I used to do, you know, I used to call it the, the Church of Long Runs on a Sunday. And I'd be running for an hour and a half. And I didn't want to, always just listen to music sometimes i'd want to zone out and listen to i like multitasking i are any of you guys like this like i like to do two things at the same time right so if i'm working out i mean when i'm working out lifting weights i listen to music right i can't work out without listening to music it's impossible but i like to if i'm like on the stationary bike i like to read something or just to educate myself in something. I always have to have two things going on. I don't know. Is that ADD? I don't know. Um, I don't know if you're like that. Are you like that? Do you like to constantly learn? But I think that there is a market for that, as in people like to listen to longer podcasts. They like to listen to longer conversations because you just get a little bit more out of it, I think. I know that the clicks and everything are just the short things, but. I'm I'm seeing increasingly people saying, listen, I really love that. It's not for everyone and some people zone out. And, you know, even in interviews that I've done myself, there's certain parts where I'm like, oh, you know, if I was editing that for, then it might be a little bit snappier. But I think you get to see the whole person on the other side, right? Which is what it's all about. So anyway, thank you again for subscribing. Thank you for enjoying my content. I hope you do. I am going to do a live stream soon. Let me know. Would you like that? When would you like that to be? Right? A lot of people like Friday nights, like late on a Friday night. I say late on a Friday night as in late in Dallas on a Friday night. Uh, and then you tend to be able to get, you know, you crazy night owl, owls that maybe you get all the kids to bed or maybe you're just coming in from the pub or the bar and you want to get involved. Uh, I'm going to do that. I'm also, I have a bunch of people that I've said that I will go on their, on their channel and I haven't done it yet because I'm so busy, but I will do it again. I want to thank you guys so much. I appreciate your support so much. You know it. Please get your questions off to me. If you have anyone that you think I should interview and you know them, tell them, tell them, and I'll interview them gladly, have a chat with them at least. So once again, thank you very much. And remember, it, whatever happens, not all actors are like this, I promise.